So last time we we managed to build this login screen. It doesn't look quite as good as it does in this demonstration because this is the actual app that I built ahead of time. But uh, the login screen is starting to come together. It's, it has uh, the ability to get the username and the password. And then we can press the button login as we can see from this method right here. Now it's time that we actually start dealing with retrofit and figuring out uh, how we're going to submit the request. So we can use Postman to demonstrate that. So if you watched any of my retrofit videos, which I would encourage you to watch the post retrofit tutorial that I made, I actually went over this exact thing in it. And so what we what we need to do to log into Reddit is we submit a request to the uh, login API URL right here. And then we submit our username and then the username once again, the password and then the API type. And in the headers, we have a content type header and we have a value of application slash JSON. Now, if that was very confusing to you and you don't understand, don't worry about it. Just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain things and I'm sure that by the end of this video, you're going to have a much better understanding. So Postman is just something that we can use to actually test it without having to go through all the heavy lifting of building the object classes and setting up retrofit and all that stuff. We can just kind of test it and take a look at what the server responses are going to be. So a positive server response, as you can see, is going to look like this. What we get is a mod hash, which is like, like a secret key for when you log in and then you get a cookie. So this is just like a regular old HTT or I don't know what you call them, but like a browser cookie. It's like a, like a session cookie for a, a person. So the two things that we need to retrieve once we log in is this mod hash and this cookie. Once we have those, we can, we'll be able to post comments or do pretty much anything on Reddit itself. We can, we can make posts, like actual posts, we can post comments, we can do whatever. So the key is going to be getting these two things. And just to show you what a negative response will look like, I'll change my password so that it's incorrect and we get a 409. So we don't need to worry about dealing with this data because in retrofit it'll actually tell us that we got a 409 and it'll let us know that we were unsuccessful in logging in. So what we're going to do is change that back to the actual password, submit the request, and we're going to build the retrofit data classes that are going to be able to read this data. So you can see right here the first one we need to build is, uh, is, a, is a class that has a JSON, an object called JSON in it. And the way retrofit works, if you have like a structure with starting with a bracket and it's not starting with JSON. So I'll open up a notepad file just to show you what I mean. If you have something that opens up with JSON and then has you know your, your JSON stuff in it, as opposed to opening up with stuff and then JSON, um, what you need to do is create kind of, kind of a starting class that, um, that will hold that first object. So I'll show you what I mean by that in Android Studio. So let's go into Android Studio and we're gonna go into the account section and I'm gonna create a new class and what I'm gonna call it is check login. I'm gonna call it check login because that's essentially what it's gonna be doing. It's gonna be checking the login response that we get. So it's gonna be checking for whether or not there's a mod hash and a cookie and if there's not, then obviously we're gonna get that 409 error that I talked about earlier. So we'll create that class and inside check login we're gonna have a single object I'm gonna call it JSON just like this and we'll go up to the top and go at ex exposed if you want more of an explanation on um, this retrofit stuff that I'm uh, going to be typing out up here definitely watch my retrofit uh, post uh, tutorial I explained this all in great detail so I'm not gonna go over it in this just because it's just gonna be too time-consuming and then we create our getter and setter methods and there we go so now we need to create this object class json so let's go up here create that new class and inside this one is going to be very similar but we're going to have data and at expose and i'm going to explain all this in just a second here and this is going to be a new object class called data and i'm going to press alt insert get the getter and setter methods as we just did before. Now I'm going to create this new class. Go up here once again, data. And inside data, we're going to have our mod hash. And we do at expose and private. This time we're going to have a string mod hash. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this one we're going to get the cookie. So I'm just go cookie and cookie and insert the getter and setter methods for both of those. And let's put a two string at the bottom there. And I actually forgot to put the two string inside each one of these. So let's go back up here, insert the two string and same 
Same thing with this one. Alt, insert, to string, and get that in there. Okay, so now let's talk about what I just did there. So as you can see from the server response here, we have sort of that over top, that like parent JSON uh, list. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna call it a list. It's like a JSON object right here. And that this is what I'm gonna call the check login class. And then inside the check login class, we have an object called JSON. So if we look at Android Studio, inside of the check login class, we have that, that JSON tag right here. And then inside of these JSON objects, we have two more objects. One's gonna be called data, one's gonna be called errors. I don't care about errors because there's nothing in there that I'm interested in. So inside of JSON, you can see I have data, but I left out errors on purpose because I don't care about it. And then inside of data, inside of data, we have three objects. Um, one is just a Boolean and the other two are strings. I don't care about this need HTTPS. That doesn't tell me or help me with anything. What I want is the mod hash and the cookie. So if we go into the data class, here we have the mod hash and we have the cookie. These are just setup steps that you need to do to use retrofit. But once again, I'm gonna say, check out my video on post requests with retrofit if you want more information on this. It will definitely clear up any questions that you have. But if you're okay with just watching me and uh, taking the explanation that I just provided, then that's fine, we'll just move on. And now that we have the object classes all kind of set up for retrofit for this particular post, we're gonna go into our feed API, which we've been in uh, many times before, and we're gonna create a new post method for um, our interface. So I'm gonna go at post, and it's gonna take one variable that I'm gonna submit, and that's gonna be my username, so I'm just gonna type user there. Then we're gonna create a call, and I'm gonna call it check login. So that's why I made this check login class. This, this is where you put the data structure that you expect to get from your response. So we, we expect to get this data structure, which I've outlined in these classes, so that's why we pass it right here. And now I'm gonna create the method, uh, what did I wanna call it? Let's go to login activity, and I guess it doesn't matter. I can just create it and call it sign in, and do a semicolon down there. And now we're gonna attach, we're gonna basically build this URL. This is the URL that we need to build, and we also need to include this header. So to do the headers, we can do, I'm gonna use a header map, just because I find that's the easiest way to do it. Or sorry, it's not really the easiest way to do it, but it's the most robust way to do it. So I always just practice with a header map in case I have to use more than one header. It's just good practice for me. So I'm going to insert that header map here, and then we do a path variable. And this is where we're gonna get our username from. So we just go string username, and then we're gonna do at query. This is where we attach um, anything with that and sign. So I'll show you in the URL in a second here. But once again, if you want more of a detailed explanation of this, you should check out my uh, tutorial on retrofit for post requests. And here we have the API type and string is no type. There we go. Okay, so to build the URL that we want here, the first thing we need is headers. So headers are basically just key value pairs. In this case, the key is content type and the value is application slash JSON. So that's really all we have here. But if we use a header map, we can, we can include a list of key value pairs. We don't really need to use it in this situation because we only have one key value pair, but I'm gonna submit it as a list just because like I said, it's good practice. If you have more than one headers, more than one header, it's really easy to incorporate that. So I'm just gonna use a header map. Next, the path variable, all that was is gonna do is it's gonna append this coding with Mitch section right here. So it's literally just a substitution. Whatever I type in for the username, it's gonna substitute that in right here. Next, we have the queries. The queries work a little different. The very first query that you append to the URL is going to prepend this question mark, and then it will append the key. So in that case, my key is user, and then it'll say equals whatever I pass as the username. For every query that I use after that, so like this second query right here, that is going to append, or sorry, prepend an and symbol. So the first one will prepend a question mark, the second one and every one after that will prepend an and symbol. And then once again, it's just a key value pair, so password right here is gonna give me that, and then the equal sign is automatically slipped in there, and then the password that I pass will get typed in right here. And then the third query is exactly the same as the second one here, and it's so it will prepend another and symbol, and once again, it's just a key value pair situation like we had with the password and the user. So that's just kind of a short um, description of what is happening here. One more time, I'm gonna say, check out my retrofit post tutorial on my channel if you want more information on this. 
So that's it for this feed API. We're going to go back to our login activity. And let's see how long this video is right now. The video isn't too long yet, so I'm going to get started with creating the login method. But all we're going to do is retrieve a response. We're not going to do much, other, much uh, more than that. So I'll create the method. I'm going to call it sign in. Um, just a note, this does not have to be the same name as this. You know what? I'll actually change it just to make it different. So I'm just going to create, um, create it and call it login just to emphasize that they don't actually need to be the same. And inside of login, we're going to create uh, two variables, one username and one password. And I'm making this final. You'll understand why I'm going to make this final. Actually, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it out and I'll explain it later when we run into the problem. And now we're just going to go through, actually, you know what? I'm going to copy and paste the retrofit from another, from the comments activity because it's going to be pretty, all the retrofit stuff, the initial setup stuff is always the same. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to copy it up to the call right here. And let's just go in there just to save me some typing because I'm lazy. And this will, oh, we need to declare our URLs object. So let's go up to the top here and go private URLs, URLs, um, call it URLs equals new URLs. There we go. And now I'm going to go down here and this is going to be a different URL. So we need to actually add a new URL into here. Go to the request in Postman. I'm going to grab this URL right here, and I'm going to create a new one. So private stat final string. I'm going to call it login URL, and paste that in there. Just to keep everything nice and organized. Now we're going to go back here, and we're going to re reference our login URL. I don't know why it isn't because it's private. That's why. Change that to public. So let's go and try that again. There we go. There's a login URL. And we're going to need to change this to a JSON converter factory. If you don't have this uh, library, if you, if you start typing JSON and nothing comes up, it's because you don't have the dependency. So you're going to have to go to the build.gradle file and get this dependency right here. You can get it from the retrofit GitHub page or you can get it from my GitHub page. It's going to be in the source code below. I'll attach all the source code. So you'll need that. And down here, we create the feed API object. That's fine. And the call. And But this is going to change. This is going to be check login. And we're not going to use the get feed method. We're going to use the sign in method. And now we just need all the parameters for the sign in method. So the first thing is the header map. So we'll go up here and we'll create that hash map. So go hash map. We'll call it the header map equals new hash map. This is literally just just key value pairs, you know, nothing nothing special here. Oh, forgot the new. There we go. And then we want to attach our first, well, our only header actually. So we just do dot put. And if we look at Postman in the headers, this is the key. This is the value. So we just type in here font. Whoops, need a capital content type and comma and then application slash JSON. And that is it for the headers. So we can pass our header map into there and the next one is going to be the username and once again the username and then my password and the query type which is json that's it remember we're just we're just trying to build this url so we have the use we have the username username again password and then the api type right there json now we'll just quickly attach an n queue so do new callback and i'm going to just grab the server response from in here so grab the failure one, paste it down there, and need to change this to login activity. And let's go back and grab the positive server response also. So let's grab that one right there and print it out. So we'll just leave that for now. Um, I just wanted to get the call set up and uh, we can actually take a look at the request really quick. So let's run the app. Oh, I forgot to add the sign in method there. So um, we need to add that. So we'll go login and type the username and the password and try running the app again. Okay, so let's go straight to the login screen. And I'm going to try logging in with coding with Mitch and my password. I might have, no, I didn't change my password. That should be good. So we see it attempting to log in. I didn't dismiss this dialog box in the code and I didn't reset this code when it was successful. So, um, I expect this to happen, so let's take a look at the log and see what kind of a server response we get. And it looks like a bunch, uh, oh, whoops, wrong emulator. 
Okay, so we get a 200, so that's good. So we are likely, um, yeah, so there we go. We get our mod hatch and we get our cookie. So um, it looks like it was successful in logging in. So that's good. That's good. Everything looks like it's working so far. In the next video, we're going to figure out a way to actually save this mod hash because we need, we need to reference this mod hash every time we make a comment or every time we make a new post and also this cookie. So we, we need to figure out a way basically to save this in the app. I'm going to use shared preferences, spoiler alert, and save the cookie and save the mod hash. And also I want to be able to redirect back to whatever page I was on after we log in. So in the next tutorial, we'll work on those things. Do not forget to leave a like. Follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.